video brought to you by Joshua LaFond with Simply Vegas Real Estate, a realtor here to help educate current and future Las Vegas locals on selling and investing in real estate. You're probably asking yourself, educate. Yes, there's a surprising amount of adults that when it comes to real estate, don't know the right questions to ask, don't know where to start, and think they need a lot of cash to buy a house in Nevada, which simply isn't true. So Josh has decided to make it his responsibility to teach his clients what they need to know, and equally important, what they need to ask, to help ensure making their home ownership dreams a true reality. So make sure you call or text Joshua LaFon today at 702-813-0533. This has been another paid advertisement from Joshua LaFon with Simply Vegas Real Estate. Make sure you give him a call, 702-813-0533. Then look at me now. How far we go back? Elementary, jump rope, high and go see, pity pad, red light, green light, red light, green light. We just talk about practice. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. It's about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. We talking about practice, man. But we talking about practice right now. We talking about practice. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You are tuned into Street Bet Sports on the Gorilla Cross Radio Network. That's right, Straight Bet Sports. Jose V coming to you live from downtown Las Vegas, Nevada, officially. I'm not in the studio tonight, as you can see here, but thank you so much for joining in tonight. Straight Bird Sports here on the Gorilla Cross Radio Network. We got Mike Carroll from the Electric Company already trying to get me started with a nice little part, you know, a nice little gift here. But once again, Jose V, Straight Bird Sports, coming to you live on the Gorilla Cross Radio Network. Thank you so much for Joshua LaFont for getting us started. Our title sponsor with Vegas Real Estate, Simply Vegas Real Estate there. Now, I know it's a little bit different. Normally, I'm in the studio. Normally, it's me and Rob G. Normally, it's Jay Madrazos. But tonight, it's just me here. I'm out, cash and field. We're getting ready to walk into the stadium here shortly as the Las Vegas Lights FC take on the Sacramento Republic. So, gay, today's going to be a great game, interesting, fun night. Like I said, Rob's not here, but Quan's back in the studio. We greatly appreciate him doing what he does every single night now. Once again, like I ask you guys every single week, I'm going to ask you again. Press that like button. Press that share button and let everybody know what it is that you're watching tonight and what you're enjoying, whether it's on the Gorilla Cross page on Facebook, whether it's on the Gorilla Cross page on Twitter, or if you're a YouTuber and you like to watch it on YouTube, the Gorilla Cross page on YouTube. We're always live every single Wednesday night. Now, I know tonight's a little bit earlier of a start time, a little bit past 6.30 p.m. Normally, we have our 7.30 p.m. show. Some of you are used to our past times from our 9 p.m. show, but today we're going to do it a little bit different. If you know my past shows before I was on Gorilla Cross, I've done a few tailgate barbecues or tailgate podcasts, if you want to call it, here with the electric company. And as you see, I'm wearing this shirt. They gave me a shirt. They allowed me to be part of them. So I'm a fan. You guys know that I'm a fan of the team. I'm a fan of the sport. I'm a fan of sports in general. So that's why we're out here. We're doing different things with the fans, with the supporters having a good day today. But again, Cashman Field, downtown Las Vegas, Nevada. Game time is 730. If you got nothing to do and you're watching this, that's fine. Take off. Come on down here. Watch the game. 7.30 start. Trust me. Should be a good match tonight. Not only that, they got the camels in the background, guys. You know what today is? Hump day. Again, you know Brett Lashbrook. You know the way he is. You know, Mr. I want to show off here in Las Vegas. We want to have a show, right? Aside from what's on the field with the talent. He likes to give the fans a bang for their buck, right? The most interesting club in the world or whatever it is he likes to call himself. So tonight, for hump day, they got camels. If you want to take a picture with a camel, come on down. Not only that, if you're a huge soccer aficionado, Fernando Fiore was here. If you know Fernando Fiore from his days back in Fuera de Serie, Latino, you know, Hispanic television, he's out here too. He's taking pictures. He's kissing babies. He's doing all kinds of things. But trust me, man, it's a fun night tonight. Now, we're going to bring in some of the guys from the electric company. Since they allowed me to be here at their tailgate, hanging out with them, it's only right that I allow them to come on camera with me, have a good time, chop it up now. If you guys remember the podcast we did before when we were at the horse trailer hideout 
um, for the Lights FC's uh, home game, uh, away game. He's been on camera with us. He's talked to us. He's he's the guy when it comes to the electric company. Not to take anything away from anybody else, but Neil, come on over, my man. Let me go ahead and introduce Neil here, part of the electric company. How's your day going so far, Good, my man? Jose. Thanks for having me. You ready for tonight's game? You absolutely, excited? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we're in a playoff position right now. The season ended right now. We'd be in the playoffs. I mean, how great is that, right? Again, you said it. In the Pacific Division, they they are fourth right now. The top four clubs are the ones that do qualify to go on into the playoffs now. The last four games, lights are two and two. Yep. But two of those are two wins, obviously, but here back to back. They're trying to get that third win here. Do you think it's possible today against the Sacramento team coming in here to Cashman tonight? Absolutely. I think Sacramento is really uh, not really prepared. They think that it's the old lights. I think that the lights have really turned the corner. And, you know, I think we're going to be surprised if we go down to the stretch the rest of the season. So, rough start to the season here, obviously, 0 and 4. Four road losses. It's tough when you're on the road and you're not at home. New club, new coach, a lot of new players, a lot of new faces that we're not used to here in Las Vegas. Obviously, we don't have them here practicing either, but we'll get into that here shortly. But 0-4 to start the season, but yet now still being in playoff contention. Does this give you more hope than past seasons when they've been playing? Absolutely, yes. Uh, like I said, there was a corner. I really think it was uh, when they got there. Matt Carson against LA Galaxy 2. It was their fifth ever win on the road. Uh, they got their uh, most recent road, uh, six this past weekend. The corner has been turned. So I think that uh, going forward, I think C. Trundle has really found that group. Uh, some of the players who still wants to get some more development, uh, they're, they're developing. And the only question is, are these guys going to be staying uh, with the uh, reserve team with the lights, or are they going to be called up to the LAFC? Once again, Jose V, Straight Bet Sports, coming to you live from downtown Las Vegas, Nevada, here at Cashman Field. We're hanging out with the electric company here at their tailgate, as they do every single time that the lights play here at home. It's actually beautiful weather tonight. It's not even that hot. It's a cool little breeze. Thank God those thunderstorms came through and it was raining the other night. But, again, the lights are two wins on home, two wins on the road, right? They're playing better, but... What do we need to see tonight, do you think, overall, for them to continue this win streak? Because I don't think we've seen a three-game win streak in a while or ever when it comes to the club. Am I correct? Oh, so. we have to look back. But as far as your question, I think it's better confidence. Just stay confident. You know, they gain confidence, they're going to pull it off, I think. Once again, we are here at Cashman Field, downtown Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas Lights take on the Sacramento Republic FC here. 7.30 p.m. If you haven't made it down here, I think tickets are as little as five bucks for children or ten dollars or something like that. It's very, very affordable, guys. It's a good time. I don't know about the food and the pricing over here. I'm not gonna give you guys all that. You still got time. But you know, you still, still got time, time to drink and hang out if you're a drinker. We don't promote drinking on the show, but I'm just saying, people like to drink and hang out at the tailgates. Now, tonight wasn't your typical tailgate. Normally, you guys got the grill, you're barbecuing, we got hot dogs, burgers, this, that. Tonight was pizza. Explain why a, a, during a weekday you guys go with the pizza instead of the grill. Well, you know, we got jobs. Okay. It's Wednesday. You know, people are getting off work at 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock. You know, we can't really have the whole balls out thing going on right now. <laughs> Sorry, whole language there. But no we can't really have that whole thing going on right now. So, you know, it's got to be a little bit more dialed down. A weekend game, all out for the game. Once again, Jose V. Straight Best Sports hanging out here with Neil. How do you say the last name? Appeal? Appfell. Appfell. Neil Appfell. I want to get that right. Of the electric company. We're just hanging out here, getting ready for the start of this game now. One of the biggest things that, and I talked to um, Danny Cristosomos a few shows back, a few weeks ago, was the fact that the team is technically no longer here. Yes, they play here. They're here tonight. It's technically a home game, even though they just came back from being on the road. And once this game is over, they'll be right back on the road because they don't live here. None of the players are housed here, as in, few, in past years when we have seen stuff here. In the past, you've had players like Jordan Morrell that had apartments right down the street that could freaking walk to the stadium if they wanted to. He went and did a show on Vegas Hype Media, our parent network here on Gorilla Cross, and he even walked to it. So the fact that the players aren't here and it doesn't feel like it's a homegrown team. You guys used to go out and support the team, whether it was here during practices or away at um, um, Keller Williams, where they used to practice all the time because they would allow fans to go. Do you feel that a, a piece of you as a fan was taken away from you when that was done 
when they decided to not house the team here anymore. Not necessarily the whole deal with LAFC, but the fact that they didn't even think or say, let's house the team here. Did that feel like something was just ripped away from you as a fan? It felt like, yes, but, you know, practically, reality is a sign of the economic times. And, you know, the lights are not the only soccer club in the world going through economic issues, and things had to be done. Uh, this was an unfortunate necessity. Am I saying it right? Necessity. <laughs> it, was, it was unfortunate, but it had to happen. Correct. Uh, and, you know, Brett Lashbrook said in the past that, you know, he approached LAFC. He needed a quality product on the team. The economic situation prevented it from uh, really going as well as, as the way they could do it in the past. But, you know, this we know it's a one-year deal. Yep. Uh, we don't know what the future looks like. But, like, right now, you know, it's going to have to be done. So I got two more questions for you. First one, your overall thoughts on Coach Steve Sharundalo and how he's done so far up to tonight, this year. Uh, it was a rough go. Uh, I'm glad that he was able to find a way to get the players' confidence back. Okay. And final thought, what do you see being the result today at the end once everybody's getting ready to go home? At worst, 1-1. One, one. Okay. I think we can probably put all, pull off a 1-0 win. There we go. Neil Apfel. From the electric company hanging out with us. Appreciate you, you, my man. We'll be in there shortly. Of course, we'll be on there shortly. Now, if Mike wants to come on, Mr. Mr. Jello Shot. If you guys like Jello Shot, this guy's been, you know, known to do a few, but we're going to bring him on camera real quick because he does set up a lot of the stuff that they do when it comes to the hangouts and the watch parties and all that. I need you to get a little close to me, Mike, so they can hear you on the mic. But I want you to basically let people know a little bit about what you guys do. I've already talked to Neil about the game and his thoughts, but I also want to get your thoughts towards the end. But a little bit about the watch parties and things like that that people don't know about. There's some people that want to watch the game. They probably feel like they don't have enough friends that are into soccer or they want to be part of that group and they just can't find it. Talk a little bit about what you guys do. So watch parties, every away game, we go to the horse trailer hangout. Okay, yeah, horse trailer hangout. Yeah, hideout. Horse trailer hideout where we did the show before. They were right there. There's drinks for the Private room in the back. We just get to hang out and do our thing. We, 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 sometimes we bring the drums. And anybody's welcome. We don't discriminate. It's not about if you're a part of us. There's no membership dues. Just come and hang out with us. We want to promote soccer in the Valley because we feel that this town is ready for an MLS team eventually. And that's where we want to go. So anybody who likes soccer, anybody who likes football, anybody who We don't, uh, you know, no dues, no memberships. Just come and hang. Everybody's a member. He's a member. I got the shirt on day one when I got here and they saw me, so. He's a member. Now, Lama Dude, basically the mascot. You guys see him out here. He's here all the time at all the games. Now, talk about shirts. Quan already mentioned it earlier, so I'm going to put it out there for you again, Quanzo. He asked Neil if he could get a shirt. Quan said he wants an electric company shirt. He said he wants to represent as well. Saturday night, 6.30 p.m., Horse trailer, hideout on Main Street, a uh, couple doors down from Abel Baker. So Quan, Quan's not a drinker, but you'll probably stop by and grab the uh, shirt. Though. Drink. No, no, we're, <laughs> not, we're not going to force you to drink. We're going to enjoy it. They got sodas, they got Red Bulls, they got, you know, social water. Uh, but yeah, well, for anybody who is welcome to come down and hang out with us, and we'll get you a shirt for sure. All right, final thoughts for you. What are the results going to be today? What do you think? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit worried tonight, so I, I'd like to see 1-1 one, one draw, but uh, if we can pull out a win, our team's been better in the second half, not like they did last week. There we go. Mike Farrell, appreciate you joining me. Thanks for coming. Like I said, man, anybody can join. Anybody can hang out with these guys. Find them on all social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. They're everywhere. They post all of the watch parties and everything that they do on there. So if you guys want to come check it out and you feel that you got nowhere to go and you want some people to hang out with and enjoy the game, come and do it with these people, man. Great people. Once again, Jose V, great best sports, hanging out here at Cashman Field. Got the, we got the camels right here. We got the camels walking right next to you right now. You guys are eating the grass, hanging out. I'm telling you, this is insane. We're at a soccer game and we got camels here on a hump day Wednesday. But once again, Jose V, straight bet sports, hanging out with you live here on Gorilla Cross Radio Network. We greatly appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Again, if you have not made it out here, make it out here now. 7.30 p.m. start. Las Vegas Lights FC taking on Sacramento Republic FC. Lights looking to go 3-0 in their last three games. Can they get that three-game winning streak? 
We definitely hope so. But I'm going to be here. I'm going to be hanging out. Follow us on all things social media. Mine, obviously, on Twitter, Jose Volante, Straight Bed Sports, on Facebook, on Instagram. We're going to be going live inside the stadium. We'll be on the field, behind the net. Anything that you want to see, we're basically going to post out there. So if you're a Lights fan and you can't make it out tonight, or you're just a soccer fan and you enjoy the show and you enjoy like looking at me and you enjoy, you know, the stuff that I post, then we greatly appreciate you and go ahead and chime in and do what you want to do and enjoy all of our content. We greatly appreciate you. Now, we got to move on just a little bit away from the soccer. You guys already know what's going on. You already know what's going on behind me. Let me grab my water because, it, 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 you know, it's a little warm out here, so I'm a little parched. You know, I got to drink some water. All right, I'm good now. So now, with that being said, there's also a lot going on in Las Vegas. WNBA All-Star game was today. You have the WNBA All-Stars versus the women's United States basketball team. Now, the cool thing about that is that you have some women that were chosen as WNBA All-Stars, but they're also Olympians. So they're playing with the Olympic team as they're playing against their WNBA partners, probably maybe one of their teammates. I saw the first half of the game. It was kind of interesting to see the way that they were playing because at first it, it was like, are they going to come out and ball out? Are they really going to give it their all? Are they really going to be out there balling hard? Because obviously USA has to get ready. We saw what happened with the USA men's. Losing two out of three here in Vegas, the only team they could beat was Argentina with an old squad. I'm half Argentina, so obviously I know. I follow the team. I know how they are. But still, they look better, right? So my thoughts were, how would Team USA for the women look tonight? Were they going to come out competitive? Were they going to be shy at first? Are they going to be cautious to see that they don't get any injuries? Maybe don't go out. Trust me, if you guys saw the first half of the game and you're watching the rest of it at home, it was a great start. Both teams were going at it. The atmosphere was electric. I know people that are there, that are covering the game, that are enjoying it live. The intros were off the chain. If you guys saw the stage, the way they hooked it up, shout out to Chet Buchanan. He had Adam on ESPN. He was out there as a, you know, he's the ACES PA announcer. Man, great job with that stuff. It's good to see that they're here and that they're back once again for the WNBA All-Star game. But the only thing that kind of sucks is that, excuse my language, it's on a Wednesday. Normally you think of an All-Star as, as a weekend, unless it's baseball. Then with baseball, then obviously, like we just saw here yesterday, it's during the week. We already know that. Home run derby. Next day is the All-Star game. Done deal. It is what it is, right? But WNBA All-Star game is here tonight. Like I said, it's probably over by now. Not too sure. Two years that they've had it here. They didn't have one last year. So technically two years in a row running that we've had it here in Las Vegas. So that's pretty cool. I want to give a big shout out to a hometown kid, Tyler Whitaker, hometown kid out of Bishop Gorman. He was just drafted. In the third round of the MLB draft, 87th overall by the Houston Astros. I was talking to his pops the other day through Messenger. The whole family is excited. They're hyped. He said he's getting phone calls from everyone. It's insane. The kid's just ready to play ball, though. If you've watched him and you followed him, Camden Perry, you already know Camden Perry from Bishop Gorman as well. We've had him on the show. They know each other. They're part of that same tree. Big, big, big shout-out to Tyler Whitaker, his pops, and his whole family. You made it, my man. I know you're going to make Las Vegas proud, and you have everyone here in the city backing you up. NBA Finals, game three is going on, right? It's already past six. The game has started. I'm not watching it because I'm here, so you guys got to keep me updated. I'm about to hop off of this here once the show's over and check out what's going on, but we know what happened in game three. Giannis continued his dominance, doing something that no one else but Shaq has done. Love the flag behind me, guys. Appreciate it. So is it going to continue, though? That's the question. I don't know. I don't see it. It's tough because if DeAndre Ayton doesn't fall out, different story. Can Giannis continue to hold and carry this team? It, it, it brings me back to the LeBron years when he was with Cleveland. I know I go back to that a lot, but LeBron couldn't do it himself. Now, Giannis has a better team around him, I think, than LeBron ever did when he was younger in his younger days in Cleveland. But he needs everyone to step up around him. Giannis scoring 40-plus points per game every single game is not going to win you an NBA title if not everyone else is showing up. I know they routed Phoenix as Phoenix routed them in the previous two games before that. Call me crazy. I can still see this series going five. I can still see Phoenix winning tonight and then going back home and winning it. Maybe not. I don't see it going seven. I had a conversation with someone earlier, and they said it's definitely going seven. Milwaukee's going to win it all. Hmm. Six is the, the, the longest that I see this series going. I still think it's Phoenix series to lose. That's just my take on that, guys. That, that's just my take. 
I know you guys probably don't agree on it. Again, it's my opinion. I give it to you guys every single Wednesday. Some of you like it, some of you don't, but yeah, you still tune in, and I greatly appreciate you for that. Once again, Jose V, Straight Bet Sports, coming to you live. I am solo tonight, Quan 59 back at the studio. We greatly appreciate you. We are live here at Cashman Field, Las Vegas Lights FC, about to take on Sacramento Republic FC here shortly in about another 30, 45 minutes now. Quan, if you can go ahead and put up that graphic for our boy Eric Navarro. Got to go ahead and do this sponsor segment before we jump into this topic that I want to talk about here. You guys already know we jump into the barber chair every single Wednesday night with our guy, Eric Navarro from Line Em Up by Eric. I'm just going to let Quan here get the, the graphic up on the screen for me because I, I, don't, I, don't I don't have my sheet here today, but you guys already know what it is. This segment is brought to you by Eric Navarro, our personal barber of Line Em Up by Eric. Hit him up at 702-884-8138. If not, you see his IG right there. Line them up by Eric. I don't have the address to the shop tonight with you guys, but you can look it up. Trust me, it's Five Star Barbershop off of Ann Road. You will not be disappointed. Hit him up. Hurry up because he gets booked quick all the time. I book the guy as soon as I get out of the chair. So trust me, hit him up. Eric Navarro from Line Them Up by Eric. You see the graphic on the screen right there. Thank you, Quan. I greatly appreciate you for that. And we greatly appreciate Eric for continuing to support the show and support us here on Straight Bet Sports. Now, Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. Let's talk about that real quick. You guys know me. I'm half Argentinian. I've been waiting 28 years for this. But not only that, three heartbreaks, a World Cup final against Germany, two Copa Americas back to back against Chile, which we should have won at least one of those. We got robbed in the World Cup. I don't care what anybody says. I know people keep judging me for that. Announcers on TV in Spanish even said, one of the worst officiated World Cup finals I've ever seen. That's where I always take that from. But if you guys follow me on social media and you saw my post and you saw what I put out there, you saw the video. I was at home watching the game with my jersey, with my scarf. I was crying. I was on the floor. I was, I was excited. I was happy. If you're a fan of any team, of any sport, when it comes to a country, even though I've never lived or I wasn't born in Argentina, but I'm half Argentinian. That's my father's background. That's where he's from. That's where he grew up. And not only that, being a fan of Messi and being such a critic of Messi. I used to talk so much garbage about Messi, how he's no longer greater than Ronaldo, how I put Ronaldo on the pedestal above him, how he couldn't win that game, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, he finally did it. He finally got the monkey off his back. Now, he didn't win the game. He didn't win the Copa by himself. The one thing that I saw in this Copa, if you guys watched the Copa America and you watched Argentina from teams in the past and how they played before Escaloni and before the coaching changes and, and all the other coaches that they've had, the difference that I saw in this team is that Escaloni finally realized and figured out how to get all of these superstars, which... Argentina has a lot of them because they play in a bunch of different big name clubs and they're that big name marquee guy or one of the marquee guys on a club that they play for in another country. But when they play for their country, they were never able to play together. It was always who wants to be that guy, who wants to be the Messi or who wants to be the superstar on the team. Or like LeBron James, we have to play around him or, or through him. The games were always around Messi, what's Messi going to do? If he has the ball, is he going to move it around? What they finally figured out is how to play together. And together includes Messi. And what I mean by that, not playing for Messi or through Messi, but playing alongside with him as a full teammate. If you see the way they played this Copa, the ball movement was extraordinary, completely different. The defending, the goalkeeping, if you saw the penalties, Martinez, the way he stopped them, the way he played in general, why do you think he won the award for the best goalkeeper in the cup? That's why. Big changes. They learned to play finally as a cohesive unit. They didn't have players coming off the bench that were past their prime or were just there because of a name. Angel Di Maria was a big, 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 big piece in this. I talked to my dad about it. Di Maria didn't start any game in this Copa America. But yet every time that he came in, it was a difference maker. Him and Messi were one and one, uno y uno. 
El toque, el toque. It was a perfect marriage made in heaven. And he didn't need to start the games. But I asked my dad, with all the yellow cards, with everything going on, with it being the final, knowing everything behind it, after all the heartbreak, after everything, do you think that they'll start Di Maria? And if so, will he be the difference maker? He said, yes. Di Maria needs to start this game in order for Argentina to have a chance to win. He didn't say he was going to score. The great goal. Great, great goal by Di Maria. Amazing pass. I believe it was by the ball. Right over the top. He gets it. Chips it right over the goalkeeper. One nothing. And that's the way it stayed. And the best part about it, Argentina didn't play to secure that goal in that final. They kept attacking. They kept going for more. They had opportunities. Messi even missed one where he hit off the pole. But still, man of the match, Angel Di Maria. Man of the Copa was Lionel Messi. Goal, goalkeeper de la Copa, Martinez. It was finally our time. And not only that, the reason that this has more merit, it means a lot more. And you can't take anything away from Messi or anything away from Argentina. It was in La Mar Maracana, in Brazil, the host country, and you beat Brazil with Neymar and a good, healthy team. Remember that. Never take this away. 28 years in the making. Finally happened. Thank you, Lionel Messi. Thank you, Argentina, for finally giving me the joy that I've been hoping for for, for for so, so long since I was a kid. I'm 37 now. It's been 28 years since they've won anything. You guys do the math. You already know what it is. Once again, Jose V, Straight Bet Sports, coming to you live here from downtown Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm at Cashman Field. I'm about to end this show here pretty quick. I know I told you guys it was only going to be a half-hour show tonight. I appreciate everybody that chimed in, that tuned in, that he decided to watch this even though it wasn't your regular show. It was a bit different tonight. But I still want to finish up with the whole Messi thing before I finish up on that topic. I put him and Ronaldo on a plateau together now. I know, call me crazy. Call me crazy. But what was missing from Messi was a Copa, was a big Copa. And if you do your math and you do your history, the Copa America is one of the oldest and most prestigious cups ever. Even though Rob G was clowning it, saying, oh, it's the Copa America. It's not the Euro, but it is what it is, right? They won it. They got it. They finally got to hoist that cup and enjoy it. Now, since we're sticking to soccer real quick before we finish the show, guys, Italy came through in penalty kicks against England. Tough heartbreak for England losing the Euro Cup at home at Wembley Stadium. They've never won one. Italy hasn't won one in, since 76, I believe it was, or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it was also a great match to watch. Penalty shootouts. I, I love watching penalty shootouts. People tell me that I'm crazy because it's, it's not the way you want to see a game in. I love it. I feel for the guy from France. I really, I mean, from the guy from Italy, Saka, he missed the penalty. A lot of people are talking crap about the kid. Leave him alone. He's young. He's going to give you a lot more hurrahs than heartbreaks. Trust me, guys. If you're an England fan and you're from England, trust me. Just let it be. Don't, don't, don't harass the kid and don't do all that stuff. It's not right. It's not good. And I just don't like to see stuff. You know what I'm saying? But... Once again, Jose V, Straight Bet Sports, coming to you live from downtown Las Vegas, Nevada. Juan, I know it hasn't been 30 minutes, but you know what, man? I'm going to go ahead and finish this up now tonight. I just want to say again, thank you so much for everybody that's part of the show. Eric Navarro from Latin Up by Eric, our barber. Um, Joshua Lafon, uh, Vegas Real Estate, we greatly appreciate you for sponsoring us as long as you have. Straight Bet Sports, Gorilla Cross Radio, thank you so much for having us on your platform, Juan. And we greatly, greatly appreciate you, and we're so grateful for being able to put all our content on there. And again, if you guys miss anything that we have today or in the previous, check us out on all things social media, Straight Bet Sports on YouTube, Gorilla Cross on YouTube, Straight Bet Sports on Facebook, Gorilla Cross on Facebook, Straight Bet Sports on Twitter, and uh, Gorilla Cross on Twitter, GorillaCross.com, and if not, the Gorilla Cross app on all platforms, Apple and Android. So look, man, I'm going to finish off with this. You can play the the funny music if you want, Quan, because I know Rob, if he was in the studio, would be pointing at you right now to go ahead and put the sad, the sad, somber music, but here it is, man. You guys saw the people behind me today. Big shout out to the electric company. We're getting back to normal, people. We're not wearing masks. We're being able to have a good time, have a drink, have a jello shot, whatever it may be with your neighbor, with your friend, or just someone 
that you happen to meet because you're tailgating and you're having a good time and you're getting ready to enjoy the game. The one thing that I've learned in life, especially through this pandemic, is never, ever, ever shy away from your loved ones, no matter the problem. Always pick up that phone, always make that phone call and say, I love you no matter what. Don't be afraid. You can still have something and not want to talk to them for a while, but make sure that you let them know that you're okay and you still want to know that they're okay. Never wish bad upon anybody because you don't want bad to come upon you. Once again, this has been another episode of Straight Bet Sports live here on the Gorilla Cross Radio Network. For Rob G, which should be here any minute, Jose V, Quan 59 The Electric Company, and everybody involved in tonight's podcast, we greatly appreciate you. Till next week, we are out. Peace. Oh, thank you, bro.